Hey everyone, so you know what? It's time to start prepping our fabric so that we can start our two scoop sponge pillow. Hey everyone, Kristen Som here, and it is time to start prepping for our two scoop sponge pillow. So to do that, what I did, so open up your um, fabric kit, or if you're using the fabrics from your own stash, whatever it's going to be, um, but you want to start prepping the fabric. So what I did, this is what works for me. I'm just going to give a few tips and you figure out what works for you. But what I did is I put them in order. So if you print out your, your sheet, so what I did, I don't print out the whole thing, but I print out the cutting direction. So I'm not going back and forth from my cutting table to my computer. Um, and then I print out the first page of each block and I put that in uh, my packet. So I buy these packets. Um, I will add a link under this video. They are called dry erase packets and you've seen them before if you've been following me for a while. Um, but I use each one. I put a little piece of uh, Kimberbell tape on there and write on there um, which block it's for. So these just make it really easy to keep everything organized. So that's what I do. And then I also, like I said, I print out that first page um, of that block and I put that in the envelope. And the reason I do that is so that I can write little notes of things that I want to say in the video. So anyway, you have a few options. So if you are going to prep your fabrics, then I'm going to give a, little, a couple of little tips on that, but you don't have to. You can wait. And um, in fact, I never used to. I always thought it was too boring to cut out, spend a whole day cutting out um, to prepare for a project. But now I really like it because then I can just grab my packet and, and work on my block and everything's all ready for me. So that's up to you, totally up to you. But what I did is I took all of the fabrics and I put them in the order on the first page. So the first page of cutting is on page three. Mine's in black and white, but you can print it in color or you can look at it on your computer screen or your iPad or whatever it's going to work for you. But anyway, so I put them in the order that they are on here just so that it's quick and easy to start prepping my fabrics, which I haven't done yet, but I did put them in order. So that's the first thing that I do. So the other thing that I do is I prep every fabric, except if it has chenille. Other than that, I prep every fabric. And I do um, the Kimberbell Fusible Backing. I find that that works really well for these fabrics. So another thing is that you can, it's totally up to you, you can take the entire piece of fabric. I get this question a lot, so I'm gonna make sure and, and mention it. You can take the entire piece of fabric and put fusible backing on the whole thing. That makes it really easy to cut. I don't do that, um, and the only reason is because it's wasteful. So you'll end up, you'll see that you'll end up with a lot of extra fabric, and that's okay because the fabrics that are already backed, you can put them in your little stash. Um, I keep a little um, applique pieces bin and it's all ready to go. You would just grab it and use it for another project. So there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and it, like I said, it's totally up to you. You can do the, you can put fusible backing on the entire piece and cut it, that's easy. Or what I do is I cut the piece of fabric that I need for that applique or for the background or whatever it is, and then I put my feasible backing on that piece. So that's how I do it, but you can do it either way. Either way works perfectly fine. And I find it wasteful because um, you're using a lot of your fusible backing and there, there will be extra fabric, but it's not really um, wasteful because you probably will use it again. I use a lot of my scraps. So, um, so just decide what works for you. So like I said, you can do it on all of them. There are little pieces that are like, um, fabric scraps or five by fives or whatever they are. Um, so you can do that whole piece. You can do it cut it as you need it. The other thing that I do 
once I have all of my um, fabrics in my little packets, I then go through and get all of the embellishments and I put all of the embellishments in that folder as well. I don't do the ones that are gonna be at the end, like the buttons, we sew those on at the end. I don't do those, I put those in its their own packet that says embellishments at the end. But for the ones that have like felt or um, glitter vinyl or, uh, leather, any of that, or the, I think that there's flexifoam. Yep, there's flexifoam in there. Oh, it looks like we have some of that iron on that we did for spring showers too. So that's cool. So I do put all of those pieces into the packet for that block so that everything is all together. It makes it easy. So I want to point out one quick little error um, that I think is an error. I'm not 100% certain, but it looks to be an error. So I just want to warn you in case. So Connie Hobbs brought this to my attention on YouTube. She said that on the melted melting ice cream two in section three, so it's that, mine's not in color, so I can't show you, but it is actually, let me show you this way. I think it was, maybe I'm wrong. Um, I thought it was a light pink piece. Ah, all right, so I believe it is this fabric. It is probably hard to see on the video with the light, but it is um, a silky solid and it's like a creamy, very light pink. That's how I would describe it. So I believe that this is the one that Connie had mentioned is an error. And so here's a, what I wanna point out. On page three, it has all of the cutting instructions for each block, for each fabric. And then if you look on page six, it has how you should cut it. So the reason that they do that, so it looks like this, it, it will be in color on yours, but on, I did print mine out on black and white to save on ink cartridge. So um, it will look like this. And what this does is it tells you um, how much of that fabric is gonna be used because if you were to go and cut like the small pieces first and then it turns out that you didn't actually have enough, this shows you an exact diagram to make sure to get full use out of your fabric. So the issue is that on that one fabric that I mentioned, this very light pinkish color, um, on page three, it says that there is a three by three piece for the melted melting ice cream two in section three. It says that it's three by three. But if you look on the cutting diagram for that block, it's actually um, three, what did we decide? Three by two, three and a half by two and a half. So what I did, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this, but what I did is I, um, wrote down all of the cutting diagrams that are from page six for that piece and then I checked them off on which ones are used so that we know which one that they're referring to to try and see if the, it is an actual error. And where it says three by three here on page three, on page six it's actually three and a half by two and a half. So I'm just mentioning that so that you can cut it a little bit wider if you need to. I will say that Kimberbell is very generous with their cutting, their applique pieces especially, so it probably is not gonna matter in the slightest, but you never know, so it, it can't hurt to go ahead and um, allow for a little extra room on that one. So like I said, it's melted, melting ice cream too. And on the diagram on page six, it's two and a half by three and a half, but in the cutting instructions, it's three by three. So not, not too big of a deal, but something I wanted to point out to you, that's the only one I, that I found so far and I didn't find it, Connie Hobbs found it. So I think she's going to go ahead and contact Kimberbell just because there's usually product updates. If you look on the Kimberbell website um, for many of the, projects they have lists of product updates so things that got missed on the cutting directions or whatever it is little things and so I usually check that before I start a project there isn't anything so far in two scoops but like I said there is that one little discrepancy so anyway I am going to go ahead and start uh, backing my fabrics with fusible stabilizer and cutting them to the sizes that I need and getting my embellishments and putting everything in my little uh, packets. 
the dry erase packets. I think there's like 35 that come in a packet. Um, and these work really great. I love how they help keep everything organized. Instead of having fabrics all over the place, it keeps everything in a little packet for each day. So that works really well for me. Do what works for you. Um, there was one other thing. Fusible backing. Don't forget you want to use fusible backing. Um, is the Kimberbell one. There's others as well. Um, SF 101 is one that a lot of people like to use. Uh, World Wiener has one, but this Kimberbell one is great. I really like this one. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, and you can get this from our sponsor. So all of the um, stabilizers, My Girlfriend's Quilt Shop has those. If you look on that same website where you got ordered your two scoops pack, you can get all of the stabilizers that you're going to need as well from My Girlfriend's Quilt Shop because they are sponsoring this project for us. So I am going to go ahead and start cutting that. One other thing is some people have a very difficult time. I've had a lot of people mention this over the various projects. So these little pictures, which by the way are in color on your PDF um, that you can print out in color. I, like I said, I print mine out in, in uh, gray, basically black and white. But um, a lot of people have a hard time de determining what fabric it is and what color um, from the tiny little, like this one, it's awfully little, right? And so you don't have to pre-cut. You absolutely do not have to. Every single tutorial video that I do, I always start it out with, we're going to use these, um, these fabrics and cut to this size. So you can prepare on that day or you can pre-prepare. It's totally up to you. So that's all. We're going to go ahead and get started um, prepping our fabrics if you choose and get ready to start on two scoops. And one other thing, have you set a goal for this, this project? So um, those of, that have been following me for a while, I like to choose a goal for every project. Um, spring showers, I think it was work out a whole bunch and I did. And um, what was the one before that? There was one before it, I did no junk food the entire project and I did really, really good with it. So this one, I have a very different goal. I'm going to have a lot of ice cream. <laughs> We're working on this two scoop bench pillow and there are so many cute blocks that make us think of ice cream. I'm going to have some ice cream on this one. I am going to enjoy it. So um, I'm just curious what your, um, your goal is going to be. I'm obviously going to have to work out a lot to be able to offset that ice cream <laughs> so I don't have to buy new jeans. But I want to know, have you created a goal for this project? project. Okay, so the next step that I do is I print out the first page of um, each block of directions. Most of them fit on one page, but some of them are, are two pages or more. And I just print out the first page because I really look at it on my computer, but I print it out so that I can write little notes of things that I want to make sure to remember to say during the tutorial. So that's the next thing I do. After that, then I start on my packets. So I make one packet for each block or each set of blocks. And um, then what I'm going to do is put that piece of paper. See, I've got them numbered and I have my, um, my blocks with the name and also a number. And the number I'm determining, it's not something that's already in the booklet. It's up to you how you do yours. Um, and then I, I fold the paper in half and I put it into the packet. And then when I start cutting all of my fabrics, I'm going to put them in the packet. So what I do is I use the paper that has um, all of the fabrics and I cut each fabric and then I'm going to put them into their respective folders. So that's what works for me. This is just little tips on how to be productive in getting all of your pieces cut and ready and into your packets if you're using packets. Um, you can use like Ziploc bags, whatever works for you. I think these things are, are fantastic and most of us have found them to be pretty cool. So anyway, um, I'm gonna start cutting my fabrics finally. <laughs> Another option is that you could take your paper and cut the fabrics for that block, put them in the, 
the packet. I think I did that on my first couple of times with using these packets, but now I do it this way. I do all of the ones on one fabric and put them into the folders. I find that takes a little less time getting all of the fabrics. So I work one fabric at a time straight down the list. Like I said before, I put them in order. Um, so that I have them in order of how I'm going to cut them and then I do put them in the packets because you can see on this um, part it does say uh, which block and since I've got all of my packets named with the block so that makes it very easy. So a couple of different ways of how you want to do it. It's it, either way whatever works for you. Oh, another thing. So somebody in our group, I don't remember the, her name, I'm sorry, but she suggested folding back the tape just a bit um, before you put it on so that it will be easy to take off. And so I did that too. I thought that was a really good suggestion. Thank you for sharing that. All right, one more tip. So on this, if you look at page three that has all the cut instructions and then you look at page six that has the diagram of how to cut it, this is really important. So for instance, on the first one, it's the white on white cherries. If you add these little squares up, so lengthwise, three, six, nine, 12, 15 plus four, 19. So you need at least 19 inches length and if you were to do this the wrong way, this is 18, just under 18, or right at 18. So I know that I need the length. So the length of this one is a little more than 21. So I have to cut with my fabric this way, just like the diagram shows, to be able to get full use out of my fabric. So I hope that that makes sense because that's an important part. Um, also, you can see how much left over. So really it's just going to be a little bit on this one. So you could go ahead and put your um, stabilizer on the entire back of the piece. Actually it's so width wise it's uh, 11 and a half. So actually we will have some left over on the width section. We should have a good amount over here. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to um, cut them, all, cut each of the pieces that I want. But I just wanted to point out that the length, um, the di following the diagram for the length and the width is important so that you can get all of the pieces in. And you always want to start with the biggest piece or cut it just as the diagram is. But either way, this page six is an important one. So I just wanted to point that out. All right, once you have all of your fabrics for each fabric, once you have all of your fabrics for your fabrics cut, <laughs> you know what I mean. Once you've got your fabrics all cut for each certain fabric. Wow, can we say that a few more times? <laughs> Sorry. All right. So anyway, once you have these all cut, then you want to back them with fusible stabilizer. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I think um, I do all of them. Unless they're being uh, used for chenille, I do all of them. I, I see how crisp they are. I really like them. I am using the Kimberbell fusible backing. Sorry, taking the label off, but uh, Kimberbell fusible backing, and that works great and very well stabilized. So I want to give you one little tip. So when you clean up your space, like after I cut all of mine and put all of the um, fusible stabilizer on, then close your, um, your cutter. If your cutter has a closer or whatever, however that works, close it. So one time mine got put under stuff, like say that it's, you know, here, whatever, and I moved something, I moved a piece of fabric out of the way and I didn't realize that this was under it, and oh, I sliced my hand really good. So I just wanna make sure to remind y'all, always close your uh, rotary cutter, that's all. All right, so I used the cutting diagram to cut all of my um, first fabrics, the cherry white on white, and now I'm going to go back to page three, the first one that has the list of all of them, and I'm going to put them each in their little packets. So again, this is just what works for me, but now that I've got this stack of cut fabrics, I'm going to put them into my packets. So let's do that.
Okay, so next up we are going to use the iron-on vinyl and it's very easy to do. Um, a bunch of us used it um, in spring showers on the umbrellas, so it should be second nature to you, but just in case. So you want to make sure, first off, you cut it like I showed in the picture before. Um, you cut it to the sizes for the two blocks that you need. And then you are going to take the top layer off. Very, very important top layer is the part that the, that is the iron on vinyl that we're going to use. Why is it always so hard to um, get these things opened up once I get on camera? Ah, there we go. Okay. So just like that, take the top layer off and you can feel that this is the sticky part and you're going to put that on top of your fabric. Let me move you over here. All right, sorry about that. All right, so this is our fabric. This is the top of our fabric. We are going to put sticky side down. It's very important. A few people on spring showers did it sticky side up and then ironed it and it ruined their iron, ruined their iron on vinyl and had to buy more. So make sure, sticky side down on the top of your fabric, the part, the right side up of your fabric. All right, and then once you have that, you can see I, it's not the sticky side that is up because I'm touching it and, and pushing it down onto our fabric. So one other thing is I did back my fabric before um, with fusible backing, and then I put my iron on there, and then you have that piece that you peeled off. Remember, we peeled that sticky part off. So this is the back of it. This is the, the slick side. We're gonna put the slick side down so that we have the paper part on top of the the iron on vinyl here and we're going to use that to iron on our iron away or our iron on topping and during that time my iron has not gotten hot okay so you're just going to iron that it's really pressing it you're supposed to press it um, I don't recall exactly how long, but it wasn't very long. And you can kind of feel when it starts adhering. So what I did on spring showers is I stored it this way in my packets um, until I'm ready to use it. And that's what worked for me. You can prepare this as you start to work on your block, or you can go ahead and get it um, um, done ahead of time and then save it. Um, sorry, like I'm doing here. So I'm just going to store it this way. This works for me. Um, and we're, it's all ready to go. So when we do that block, I'll tell you when we do the block, but when we do, we're just going to take off this paper topping and it will be all ready to go. So the two parts that we need for that iron on vinyl, one is for the milkshakes and the other one is for the truck. So those are the two that will need the iron on vinyl. For the milkshakes, it will go on the, um, the glasses. So that blue, remember I showed you at, before I ironed it on. So that long blue, it was the eight, eight by five piece. That's the one that we put the iron on vinyl on top. And then the other one is for the truck window. So again, we have the truck window, we've got the iron on vinyl, and just like we did it before, we're gonna put the sticky side down on top of the um, blue window. And then like I said, I'm gonna store it in my packet. So those are the two iron on vinyl pieces. You will have extra, a little bit of extra um, that you can save for another project, but it is easy to work with iron on vinyl. Just make sure not to have the sticky side up. Make sure it's down on top of the fabric. Okay, so after you have all of your fabrics cut and organized into all their packets, then what I did, it's up to you, but what I did is I opened up my embellishment kit and I put all of the embellishments inside of the kit as well. So what I mean by that is the flexifoam, the leather, the vinyl, the um, 
all, all of the pieces, the felt, everything is in their, the correct packets um, for that day's block. And like I said, I do keep the, um, the first page of the printout. So after you have all of those embellishments in there, um, I only did the ones that are going to be on the block. So things that are sewn on after the fact, um, I'm keeping those in the last packet. So the embellishment packet is the last one. And that has the things that will be sewn on in the music box and the ribbon um, for the ending. So those don't go along with the block until after it's done. So I have those on the last packet. So one other thing that you want to do is your batting. So I put a piece of batting in every single one of my packets um, so that I, I have all of the parts. Everything that I need for that block is in my packet and ready for me to just grab a packet and start working on a block. So what I do, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, is after, sorry, after, um, after I put down all of my notes, so whenever the final cut size, the final cut size is what determines your batting, and I do it a half inch larger. So for instance, this one, the final cut size is six and a half by six and a half, so I have a little note to remind you on the tutorial that the batting will be seven by seven. It can be any size larger than a half inch, and you just want it big enough that it's going to tack it down, that second step of the quilting, which we'll go over with the first block. But that second step is to tack down the batting, and you just want it at least large enough that it will tack it down. It can be larger. Some people put an entire piece down, and then trim around and then start on the next one. And that works too. Whatever works is totally fine, um, but you wanna have your batting with you also. And like I said in the beginning, you can get all of your fabrics ready so that you just have, uh, you grab a packet and you're ready to go on that day's uh, block, or you can do them before you start on the block. I will go over all of the directions at the beginning of every video, so it's totally up to you. It doesn't matter, um, but, this is just to help you prepare for those of you that want to get your fabrics all ready for two scoops. I don't have any ice cream. I have to go to the store. So I had this goal. I'm going to have ice cream <laughs> with every video. That's a crazy goal, I know. But yeah, that's the plan. So I don't have any ice cream, but I hope you are enjoying ice cream. And I hope when you do that you share a picture while we're working on the two scoops bench pillow. You know what I really want though? I want a caramel apple. That's what I really want. <laughs>